According to today's guest, Kasha Rashfall, each of us has seven windows of opportunity in our life. By the time you reach age 50, you are almost at the accountability window, which can show up as an inner pressure or drive to finally start living. At age 52, you are there full swing. It's often the time when people finally get serious about making their dreams real if they haven't up to that point. We often see long-term relationships break down and career changes, as well as other changes. But change is possible only when you believe you can change. What really creates change is not just information gathering, but actually integrating the work with your whole self, body, mind, emotions, and soul connections. Kasha says it requires a lot of courage and gumptions to be true to yourself. Be who you've always wanted to be and do what you've always wanted to do. If you're like me, you will be both fascinated and curious about today's discussion. So stick around while Kasha helps us understand the topic of aging from a way higher perspective. Hello and welcome to Ironing Out the Wrinkles. I'm your host, Ros McMaster. And I'm your host, Kate Shaw. Together we're taking the age out of ageism, helping men and women embrace life after 50 with less fear. Kasha, today's guest, works with intuitive leaders, practical creatives and purpose-driven professionals who have a deep desire to serve from their highest wisdom, infuse their life and work with spirituality and to be renowned for the impact they create in their community and the world. Kasha is the brain behind Sacred Fame, the art and science of being seen, well-known and highly paid for being yourself and practical Akashic records, the trainings to study and master the practical magic of the Akashic records. An integrative healing conduit, energy magician, and Akashic records teacher, Kasha said she's had some really cool wisdom come through while doing body work with her clients. Working with a system called the Stress Indicator Point System. So, she is going to share this wisdom with us today. And I think we'll also be looking at soul agreement information for your alchemy of numbers studies. <laughs> My, that's just a whole lot to take in. And everybody is probably very confused who hasn't heard of any of those terms before. And I know you're going to explain to us at some point what all that means. But I know you have a very interesting background story to how you even came to walk this path as an energy magician, which I love that expression. So can we just start by having some of your story? What led you down this path of study? That's a great place to start. My story is very long and winding, and I'm so excited to share little bits and pieces of it. Um, it really starts, I think, my breakdown started when my dad walked out when I was 16 and then I met my husband within the same year and so I went from this place of men suck and I hate men to meeting the man who is still my husband today you know 27 years later and that began the breakdown and then we we got married we had children and I really struggled as a mother even though I have this beautiful life. I'm 24. I have, or 26 at this point, I have two beautiful, healthy babies, loving family, great partner. And I am so miserable. I'm suicidally depressed and went on antidepressants for about a month, felt kind of the same. And I, I remember having this conversation with my mother and she gave me this book by Dr. Wayne Dyer. If you've ever heard of him. Yeah, we know. Yeah. And he, he really helped me to save my life because even though, so the book is called The Power of Intention and I actually got my copy signed by him many years later. I dove into it and it had this magnetism about it that I couldn't explain. This is before I even knew I had a spiritual bone in my body. I was reading his work and it made no sense. And yet I was hooked. I was so addicted to what he was saying. What do you mean our thoughts? matter what do you mean I can change the way I think and then everything else will change so that was the beginning of, of my path of you know 
learning about this thing called spirituality, this thing called energy, this thing called intention, and then eventually down the road, this intuition. Through Wayne, I discovered other authors and teachers like Louise Hay, and you know, later down the line, I um, went. So, so at this time, I'm an insurance underwriter. That was my first career, which is very much a logical you know, risk analysis, lots of math, lots of really boring stuff. And so I'm doing all the things. I'm taking everything on the list. I'm now married. I own a home. I have a car. I have two cats, um, you know, the two kids, a career in corporate for life. And yet I'm so unhappy and empty. And so this other world that Wayne introduced me to through his books started to open up my path. And because I started researching and learning about some of these other things like energy intuition, I started meeting different people, of course, right? People that run in some of these other circles. And it came to a point where I realized underwriting is not my passion. It is not my my purpose. It's something I, I'm good at and it pays the bills, but it's not something I want to do. And so I I dove into life coaching and neuro-linguistic programming and then met different people who then introduced me to other things like energy. And all the while, I was following the breadcrumbs that, you know, my soul or the universe or whatever spiritual team I have was leaving for me. And every time I would go back to my body and it was like, NLP, what is that? I don't know. I need that. Yes. Take a training. Huna, which is a Hawaiian spiritual system. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that is, but I need that. Okay. Yes. Take some training. Through the people I kept meeting, I was being introduced to more and more not only scientific um, theories and technologies for how to help ourselves change, but also more metaphysical, esoteric, energetic ways of being. I have a wonderful mentor and teacher that was my NLP instructor when I was doing those trainings, and he walks the path of both science and metaphysics. And so that really set the stage for me to embrace both. Because I have that logical side of myself and and yet there's this other you know right brain creative side of myself I thought okay well I have to know both which is why I'm so obsessed with both the SIP system which is what I work with it's a system of energy kinesiology or actually specialized kinesiology another way of saying it It was actually developed by an Australian um, Ian Stubbings brilliant guy and then um, the Akashic Records which is not scientifically really proven in any way uh it, it's more of an esoteric modality and I mash the two together along with a whole bunch of other stuff because that's been my path and all these things culminated eventually when my son was 13 I remember I finished healing from that that depression that struggle with motherhood and I mean 13 years is a long time to heal yes. from something going yes. from I hate being a mom to I love it. And so as you can imagine, the shame I felt even after I healed, even though now I love motherhood and I'm rebuilding my relationship with my children and I know all this cool stuff, the shame was still there. And so I had more healing to do. Wow. And so you know, long story short, I keep learning, I keep studying and <laughs> including all this cool stuff. Yeah. And, and shame is a big one, isn't it? We were just talking about shame with someone else. So at how's the shame going now are you over that or is that still a work in progress I think it's always going to be a work in progress it's definitely layers that I've peeled off realizing that you know the, the way I'm built the way I'm designed um and, and this goes into my numerology which is again why I'm obsessed with it you know I'm a ruling number seven I learn by doing, I learn by experience. And then I take those learnings, synthesize my own way of, of talking about them and teaching them back and helping people through that. So if I had, well. oh, are you? Yeah. So seven. if I hadn't had all those experiences and really learned on my own skin, I don't think I, I'd be as good at what I do as I feel I am. So what you're and saying is horrible so, things made you good now. Mm -hmm. that was like the, that made you grow yeah. yeah don't we always learn the hard way <laughs> yeah yes yes absolutely At least I do that yeah I kind of reconciled that that's my path and I don't like it always because I I don't like hard nobody likes hard no. <laughs> and yet it pushes me over the edge and then I have a breakthrough and it's like of course of course this is the purpose of all of that 
And so even the shame, you know, if I can help one person by the, the very fact that I was able to heal from something as horrible as hating being a mother, you know, then it, then it was worth it. And of course, my kids and I laugh about that now. They know they're, they were a huge catalyst. Like they, they are the keys to why I'm still here. The gift. Yeah. Is, is yeah. My gift. But you know, the breadcrumb yeah. you for it. I like the way you said you followed the breadcrumbs. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess we all have breadcrumbs in life that if, if I ignore them, they bite me really. Don't yes. They? Yeah. And, and just, it's a really important point where you said you just sat with your body, you sat with yourself and that's where the answers mm -hmm. come, you know, because people are yes. always talking about how do I move into that next step, but what do I do? And it's just mm -hmm. about sitting, taking a breath and uh, allowing your own body and the intuition and spirit to speak to you. And, and it does, if you mm. sit still for long enough and listen. Through the breadcrumbs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. So Absolutely. the Akashic records, people will be fascinated to know what actually is an Akashic record. Um, well, we're going yeah. to talk about quite a few things today. Yeah. So and it's not just the Akashic records. Um, My husband asked me that this morning. What is the Akashic records? I said, I'll tell you tonight. <laughs> yeah. So if, if um, in in lay persons um, 101 language, mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how would we tell someone what's an Akashic record if they asked us? What do we what do we learn from an Akashic record? That's a great question. It's like a cosmic library or like the universe's library. So imagine walking into a quantum field of information. So it's literally just molecules or, or electrons, you know, whatever, whatever are the smallest particles of our world, walking into a library filled with that. And of course, walking, you know, <laughs> tuning in, but that's all it is. It's, it's a, it's a primary substance, an etheric substance that has been um, around for ages, probably since the beginning of time that records every thought every emotion, every decision, every event, everything that exists. So just like in a actual library with books, you can walk in and read about pretty much anything you want. If you know how to access the Akashic field and, and you can formulate a powerful enough intention and question to receive an, a piece of information back, that's how that works. You can go in and say, I'd like to know about X, Y, Z. You know, why do I have this challenge? Why are relationships with people challenging for me? Or how is this serving my growth? How can I move through this obstacle? How can I tap into my potential? Or based on my decision to do X, Y, Z, what is the potential outcome? So you can gather information about yourself, your decisions, your challenges. And then the Akashic Records, because it is a, a divine you know, information, divine energy, it always gives you the truth. So there's no judgment. There's no, um, you, you know, you're bad. You're, you're, there's none of that. It is literally unconditionally loving truth that gives you a bird's eye view, a soul eye view perspective of who you are, why you're having certain experiences and how they are affecting you. And then potentially what you could do to shift it. The most important thing that I always add is the Akashic Records do not predict anything, right? Because as a sovereign human being, all your choices are the only thing that matters to create your future. Mm. There's no one, nothing in the spirit that can tell you what to do because that, that would um, supersede your free will mm -hmm. and, yes. and nothing can do that. And the other thing the Akashic Records don't do is, is, um, Sorry, they don't predict and they don't tell you what to do. Mm. So, so your choices are create your future. Nothing can predict what will happen except the choices you make. And then they can't tell you what to do. So it is literally like receiving just loving perspective from you know your soul wisdom, universal consciousness about you. Yeah, that's that's fabulous, Kasha. That's just exciting stuff. Yeah. Mm. And it, it always boils down to free will and choice. But um, earlier we spoke about, uh, as we were introducing you, we spoke about the seven windows uh, and the seven windows mm -hmm. of opportunity in your life. So what, what are the seven windows be before we get to age 50 and 52? What are the yeah, other sure. windows leading up to that? Sure. So prefacing the windows, I use a, a system of numbers or numerology called um, alchemy of numbers. It, it's been called many different things. And so 
the windows of, I can talk about the windows through the perspective of this system. Um, there are other systems such as you, one of you mentioned the Enneagram or astrology or human design that have a different language to explain some of these things that I'm going to be talking about. So this is my lens and, and the lens that I study. Um, so basically these windows are, there's seven of them. Each of them is 13 years long. The first window of opportunity is from age zero to 13, and it has to do with communication. So as children, as tweens, uh, you know, early teenage, we learn how to communicate with other people. Um, we, we learn how other people communicate with us. And so that is the, the grand perspective of that lays down the foundation of then, you know, how we move into the world. And, and the second window is all about connection. So when we're teenagers to early 20s, it's all about relationship building. So this is how we learn to relate to others, how we learn to relate to ourselves, right? Because how others communicate uh, with us or relate with us really influences how we do that inside. So these windows of opportunity, I call them that um, because they are really, you know, if we have conscious parents, if we have a really wonderful upbringing where we have choice, where we are empowered, we can become these amazing, beautiful, empowered human beings. If we have a really tough upbringing or trauma or something that happens to us, the, the way we communicate, the way we connect um, gets disrupted. And it doesn't mean that we can't become empowered human beings, but often it is harder, isn't it? We yes. carry baggage from our childhood, from our young adulthood. It sabotages it, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So they are opportunities. Um, and if we do healing work, you know, you can go back to a lot of our problems start in childhood, even when we get into like, I turned, I just turned 45. So I'm not quite in the 50s yet. But a lot of my stuff, my baggage dates back to when I was four years old, seven years old. So then I can go back and say, okay, so if that was all about communication, you know, what, what were the challenges and how can I resolve them? And so it just gives you precision to look, oh, you know, yeah, how you I get feel. it. Okay. So what, right? whatever, whatever is happening um, at that window in time. So like you say, after 13 to your twenties communication. So whatever was happening in your life in that age will be centered around communication. So that would have sabotaged mm -hmm. you later in life. Mm -hmm. And th but that's where you know, you need to work on a particular mm -hmm. communication issue makes sense oh that's, that's, doesn't it yeah that's yeah. brilliant yeah. that's exactly right one, that's you know and this is one lens right so then the window then the next window is um action oriented so this is when we're in our mid-20s into our 30s where we often will get motivated to either you know help ourselves heal create a career go traveling whatever it is we're driven by this inner fire to create to do something um, whether that's for good or for learning opportunities, you know, we, we have this active period of time. Then in our late 30s, uh, I believe it's age 38, if I'm doing my math right, um, we enter into the receiving window of opportunity. And this is a really interesting one because it is all about blessings, harvest, so to speak. So what have you created up until now in your life? And what can happen, and, and this definitely happened to me, is you know, I hit this, this window, uh, I think it's, it's age 38. And again, I'm in this beautiful, loving place, I have so much success and all this stuff, I don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy to receive, right? So more healing, where did that start? And it, you know, at this point, yes, we I've had all these other windows. So there was connection issues, communication issues. At one point, you just realize, it doesn't really matter where it started. It's like, what am I going to do about it now? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who put the belief there, who yelled at me, who didn't, you know, wasn't nice to me, whatever trauma. I got to this place where it doesn't matter if I don't know how to receive, what am I going to do about that so that I can be better at receiving all the blessings that are in my life? Oh, right. So, so that profound, window from, mm -hmm. from 38 to then 52, I, I'm, I use a calculator to do math now, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, when, when we got age to 50, 50, yeah. Yeah. So by age 52, you are in your accountability window. And that's very significant because at that point, you know, you've had a 
a, a good 50 years of life, of experience, of healing, falling down, successes, all of that? And have you truly been honest with yourself about the, the desires in your heart? Not what someone else told you you should want, not what you think you can get, but are you truly accountable to your dreams? So and that's why that imagine. window, mm. it kicks people's butt. Yes. Because all of a sudden you're faced with this, oh my God, I've been living someone else's life. Yes. And this is why midlife crisis, this is why mm -hmm. career changes, relationships, <laughs> all of yep. that, right? Yeah. And it's, is that, I've forgotten what number we're up to. Is that five or six or seven it's window? Fifth, it's a, is that the fourth window? That's the fifth. Oh, the fifth. That's the fifth. fifth. And so yeah. what happens after that? Our podcast is for 50s to 100. So what's yeah. after the That's fifth window? Question. So we begin, so our 50s, you know, accountability, um, sorry, so age 52 precisely is when you, on your birthday, you enter the accountability window. And then the sixth one, so 13 years after, so I guess 65, you enter the reflection and then the integration window follows that. So assuming you, you know, sort of decide, okay, I will be accountable to my dreams, not all this other stuff that I think I should be doing or who I think I should be being. I'm going to be accountable to who I am. And even if I don't know that, I'm going to go on this path of whatever it takes to figure that out, to get to know myself. So you have 13 years of that. When you enter the reflection window, um, things can feel a little bit crunchy sometimes, a little bit almost like you are in, in a cocoon becoming a butterfly. So um, you are metamorphosizing, you are transforming into the greatest version of yourself at that point. Oh, that's 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 you now. Often, yeah, that's me now. now. That's me now. That's hopeful. <laughs> I hit the big seven O this, this where... year. 70 oh, this great. year. great. Amazing. Amazing. Sounds like it's a good year so, then. It is. And you know, you, you discover that you're probably very deeply creative. And it doesn't yeah. mean you have to paint pictures, but maybe you're a writer or maybe you mentor someone or maybe you find a solution to a problem in the world that you then begin sharing with the world. And so if, if we, you know, in our Western culture here, like I live in Canada, there's this belief that you start work at whenever you finish college and you work until 65 or 70 and then you retire and then you live. And I that is not retirement, do you? <laughs> no, no. So then when you retire and you're technically in this deeply creative uh, window of opportunity, this reflection and integration, you might find, well, I actually don't know myself at all. And so I have nothing to contribute. Whereas if you start much earlier in your 50s, becoming aware of what you love, what drives you, what motivates you, why do you want to do this stuff with your life? What were your dreams? The, the crazy dreams that you had as a kid when you thought anything was possible, right? Maybe you don't want to be an astronaut anymore or a ballerina, but, but why did you want to do that, right? Yeah. Why did you want to be an astronaut? Because you believed in, you know, infinite potential, right? So going back mm -hmm. to that in your 50s will ensure that you don't just retire and hit a wall um, <laughs> and not know yourself. You will enter this beautiful and this is where um some of my clients that I work with with the energy kinesiology um the sessions taught me this that especially for women because we have the womb we have that beautiful creative um, aspect of ourselves that can bring life into the world even if you're not a mom even if you never wanted children it doesn't matter in that period of time in your 50s and beyond there something energetic happens and I don't know why it happens or where it comes from. I suppose it's universe design. I don't know. But it's like your womb goes from creation, so the potential to create life, to creativity. And it's a very subtle distinction, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we have menopause and all of that. And so the body stops making babies. And, and yes, that is true. But energetically, we can um, dip into creativity at such a deep level. Um, I call it the the crone wisdom. Yeah, you know, you go from just thinking that. nurturing, yeah, nurturing young to nurturing yourself to nurturing this greater idea of of whatever it is that you're bringing into the world.
Does I, I hope yes. I'm, I know I'm throwing a lot of no no. no. Crumb. That, I used to think yeah. crumb was an insulting word, but it's not, is it? Yes, we just had someone else talk about yeah. um, life after fifty, and she was talking about the crone wisdom. So yeah, when you're mm -hmm. explaining that, I thought, yeah, that's the crone wisdom. Yeah, yeah. that's the crone. So oh, that's hopeful, isn't it? That's, that's great. Um, that's so exciting, and I love the ex explanation of it. It's like yeah, and because even what you were saying, like I'm sixty one. And so I'm filling this this dream, doing this podcast. And when Kate came on board to do the podcast, she was really stepping out of her comfort zone Big to do time. this and yeah. thinking, I have to do something different. I have to take a risk. I have to put myself out there now. So we're both doing the podcast for the same reasons, but at different points in that window of life that we're at. So the mm. energy is very different mm. for both mm. of us doing the podcast. Um, so it makes Definitely. perfect sense, it makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. And so Kasha, it's, um, you know, all, all the changes that take place at each one of those. Oh, are we finished with the windows? That was the last well, the, window. So the last, last little bit I, that I would add is, is the integration window. And that takes us well into our nineties. Oh, and great. It, it's interesting because you know, integration, you think, okay, so you take all the things, all your experiences, all your wisdom, everything you know, and you are, and you weave it together into this tapestry of this beautiful, you know, anchor of, of your frequency on the planet. I think that's when your soul, whether you've had a beautiful, successful life, or, or you've really struggled, it almost doesn't matter, because you have done your best, right? You have you have fallen, you have gotten back up, and, and you've hopefully by then gotten to know yourself at a much deeper level, and you can appreciate who you are. And so you're integrating a lifetime in preparation for whatever happens next. Obviously, physical death is a, you know, we all get there, but we don't know what's beyond. And so the last window of opportunity, that integration, you know, is this mysterious time of, I'm going to integrate everything I've been and known and had and done so that whatever's next, I can just face it. Yes, that's so very it, true. We, we've interviewed a couple of men mm -hmm. who were in their 90s. Yeah, okay. and that's um, with them. They, yes. they pretty much said what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How well, lovely. Beautiful. I think we can get to a place of peace, hopefully mm -hmm. peace by, you know, before the end. And that's what that window is all about. Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. So with with all the changes that take place in each one of those windows and it's you know that's where people come unstuck. They have a lot of difficulty with adapting to changes and I know in one of your videos you said um change is possible only when you believe you can change. So can we talk a little bit about change? Sure. Gosh, this is a big wide ocean of a topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, and again, I can only really speak from my own experience and the experiences of of the clients that I get to work with. Um, especially early on in my journey, I was gathering a lot of information. I was reading, you know, a lot of the Wayne Dyer books, like I said, and then whatever else came across my path. And um, I didn't believe that I could change. I, I didn't think it was possible. At one point, I remember working with a with a healer and saying to her. You know, I think I'm the only person in the world that can't figure this out. And she she's brilliant. She kind of called me out and says, and she said, you know, I think you think you're special because you you think you can't figure it out. <laughs> like I think you want to hold on to this stuff. And it really gave me pause. Um, I wasn't offended or anything like that, but but it really gave me pause. Do I, why don't I think I can change? Right? What is it? And that that insight brought me to this truth about me this is before the akashic records you know i figured this out on my own that you know what i'm actually doing a lot of information gathering but i'm not doing the work which is why mm. the change isn't happening mm. because it's one thing to read a book or yeah. take a class I read all the books and then be like okay got it on the shelf now what but if you don't show up for, you know, whatever it is, breath work every day or brushing your teeth twice a day or eating more salad, mm -hmm. drinking more water, like walking, um, journaling, meditation, whatever it is, the thing that works for you to help you be effective and, and help you be your best self. If you don't do that, if you just know about it, nothing's going to change. Nothing. 
can you I might ask you, you can that, wish that? and hope and yeah yeah and how you said there's all those opportunities um in each of those windows of life um what happens if we don't reach for those opportunities and you know we don't benefit from each window so this is the beautiful thing kate and i love this question the two two answers okay there's the human perspective and then there's the soul perspective which is why i love the record so much if the human being does nothing in their lifetime to, let's say, you know, let's call it improve or grow or better themselves, you might say that that person suffers, right? They, they, they might not make as much money as they want, or they might not have the relationships as they want, or perhaps they even struggle with addiction or something like that. Um, you might say that that person, you know, obviously we know everybody does the best they can with what they know, with who they are. That person is still doing their best but it might be said that they are suffering, right? Mm. There's some suffering in their life. Um, or if the person does reach for opportunities, then they do some healing and, and maybe they do have the successes they want. Now, from the soul perspective, at least this is how I understand it. The soul grows and expands either way. The soul has no judgment of how we experience life. So we could be That's addicted. Good. We could be struggling. <laughs> We could be, you know, failing miserably, failing from our human perspective, and yet the soul just grows and expands and integrates all of the things we experience as humans. So, so from yeah, that, if you if you look at it from that sort of soul eye view perspective, it's like, huh, oh, okay, so I really can't get this wrong. There's no way you can get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too, isn't it? Like we spend a lot of time saying, um, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Well, and you said you yeah. had more. I heard and you say once you've got more than one life purpose, which that, that shocked me. You have more than one. I yeah, didn't realize. Than one. I, hmm. I believe, okay, so again, <laughs> two perspectives. There's the human perspective of like, often people equate purpose to what they do, their vocation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. With the job they do. Um, that is one part of your purpose, but there's, there's, you know, rearing children or writing books or oh, growing yeah. a garden or, or ha having pets, all of that adds up. Um, the biggest, the only purpose we have, according to the Akashic records is to thin the veil between our human self and our soul. And if we presuppose that the soul is absolute love, unconditional love because it is in the universe all that is all you know whatever we call it then the more loving we are as a human being to ourselves and by virtue of that to others we are fulfilling the purpose okay that's it yeah that's what well, that takes a lot of pressure off doesn't it yeah. although it also yeah. seems very difficult for a lot of people but mm -hmm. yeah i mean mm -hmm. when we move into that second stage of life beyond 50 and you know now we're getting told that in order not to fall into depression and to mm -hmm. um you know ward off feelings of being irrelevant and invisible that we need to keep creating and so now there's new pressure to well, don't waste what, time what don't am i going time. to create yeah, and yeah. yeah but you're just saying just spread kindness spread love um be loving to yourself heal whatever needs to be healed you can't pour from an empty cup so heal whatever needs to be healed and make love your purpose yeah it's much better yeah. isn't it exactly. you know how do you do believe um i've heard you saying in some of your talks your wonderful talks on youtube um about past lives and dna from our ancestors um, mm -hmm. And they actually affect us still today. They're like great grandparents' DNA. I've, I found that fascinating. And again, so there's two perspectives. <laughs> there's, you know, the science and then there's yeah. the metaphysics. Yeah, you can definitely look at it as, at, as past lives. Um, often when I do readings for people in the records, that's one of their top three questions is what past lives have I had? Mm -hmm. um, I believe there's a misconception around if you if you have a struggle in your current life, you might think, well, I must have been awful in a past life. So what past lives did I have to cause what's happening today? And, and there's no correlation, really. Um, yes, sometimes past lives have a bearing on certain things that activate in the current lifetime, but not always, not always. Um, if we look at the science of it, it's called epigenetics. And, you know, obviously Dr. Bruce Lipton is the, the guru on that. He's the one that really discovered it and de developed it. And, and there's studies that have been done that 
um, trauma especially gets coded in DNA and gets passed down. I mean, I've heard anywhere from seven to 14 generations forward to ensure the survival of the person or the mouse or the rat or whatever they're studying. You know, so yes, it absolutely has an effect, but past lives don't necessarily, there's no way to prove it, right? I can't yeah. prove to you, mm -hmm. right? What, you know, my own healing, the, the thing that finally helped me heal from, from the motherhood struggle that I shared was information about a past life. And again, I can't prove it mm -hmm. if that actually happened, but it gave my mind you know, an idea, it gave it an explanation. I was like, okay, I can live with that. I, that makes sense to me. And now I can do the work to then heal and finish healing from that. Yeah. So I think, it, um, it, I, it, go on, Kasha. I was just going to say, if a past life is relevant, it will absolutely come up in the records. If it's not relevant, it won't. Okay. Yeah. But I, I think that goes back to, to what you were saying, like most wounds, uh, and tapes that we're playing unconsciously start in our childhood so you know we can go back there and understand where the root causes were but all i have control over is well okay i can't do anything about that what am i going to do about it now and it's the same about delving into a past life i mean i can understand it but i can't do anything to change what happened back then but I have a choice now, what am I going to do to deal with this issue now? And so un understanding where you were coming from and the issues after childbirth, that was nice and it helped you, but then you still had to make changes in your life to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's that to adapting to change again. Yeah. Yeah. Change, decision-making, those are the most important things. Yeah. yeah we yeah. love what you mm -hmm. say that there's nothing wrong with us at all. And that we just have layers that we need to unpack. Um, you do offer mm -hmm. people help with that, don't you, to unpack Absolutely. their lives? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Is so that the um, point system, is it? The so, yes. Yeah. So, SIPS, SIPS um, is a system of specialized kinesiology, or also called energy kinesiology, stands for, yeah, stress indicator point system. It's a way of working with the energetics of the body. So it's uh, based partially in traditional Chinese medicine. Like I said, it was developed by an Aussie, Ian Stubbings. Um, it allows us to track where and how the body holds stress. So stress can be chemical, emotional, um, mental, even spiritual. And by um, muscle testing and following certain, you know, layouts of, of um, we work with the meridian system. So each meridian has different points on it. By activating different combinations of those points, we can uh, light up, so to speak, like um, what's a, what's a better word? Uh, pinpoint a certain type of stress in the body and then using combinations of points we can like download it to, to get it out basically it's like cleaning pipes it's like putting Drano down a clogged plumbing system um, stress is like an interference pattern in a pipe and when when we put the Drano down the clog comes out and information flows better right if our body is energy and every system in our body the blood vessels, the nervous system, um, you know, the lymph system, every single cell communicates energetically with every other piece of the body through these information highways. If those highways are stressed, that information can't get through as quickly or as clearly. So mm -hmm. SIPS allows us to just clear the, the highway, get rid of mm -hmm. the traffic, mm -hmm. so to speak. It's good you can do that. Yeah. 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 And, and what have you been awesome. able to tell specifically about older clients? from this system like, is it too late when you were we're really old say we're 80 is it still <laughs> no 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 um you know this this dips into um gosh i don't even know where to go with that question but it's never <laughs> too late okay it, it, it's not now some things can cause you know what i would say is is permanent damage to like physical tissues Right. If, if someone has held on to certain emotions for a really long time and or, or certain chemical stresses uh, like addiction over time, definitely the physical body can be impacted. But if we can clear the energy of that stress out, you might still have, um, you know, a muscle that is too tight or or ligaments that are too tight, for example, in the physiology. But you might after clearing that stress, you might feel differently. You might feel more spacious. Your emotions will be different. You will think more clearly, 
right? Mm -hmm. So the body, I think, unfortunately, disease does, we, we do reach a point of no return where the body cannot go back to, you know, full state of physical health, where, where you know, if you've, if you've been an alcoholic for a really long time, your liver might not return back to its, its you know, original state ever. But if you do the healing work and, and do the emotional work and the mental work and all of that around the addiction itself, you can mentally, emotionally, and spiritually return back to a state of equilibrium or, or absolute health. That's really so, positive. That's yeah. good. That's how I would, that's how I would Absolutely. answer that. It's, Thank you. Never too and, late. Yeah. yeah. And like they say, being, uh, you, you have to be prepared to be uncomfortable while you're making that change. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. yes. My and, support system, community, so important. Yes. And, and it's like you were saying before, you know, you can read all the books and go to all the workshops. You have to put action into place. And because, you know, mm -hmm. as a counsellor myself, I meet so many people that, yeah, they they just want the quick fix. They go to the counsellor mm -hmm. and it's like, all right, I've been to the counsellor. And the next time they come back, it's like, well, you know, um, what have you done between this session and the last one? Oh, nothing. You know, <laughs> like it's not going to change without you You've actually have growing pain. Don't place. you like when you're growing, there's always pains in your body because you're yeah. growing. So I guess it's sort of like, but it's that. nice. My, my son's only 23 and he's on a, a beautiful spiritual path and he's already reading books that I didn't start reading till I was in my thirties or forties. But, and he, he said that to me just a couple of months ago, he said, um, you know, I'm not just reading these books, mum. I, you know, I ha I'm putting the stuff into practice. Like, wow, you know, he's yeah. wisdom beyond his years, little darling. Yes. Years. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I um <laughs> I love what your YouTube channel. I've really loved that 2023 breakdown from month to month that you put out. I've listened to it a couple of times. I think I'll listen to oh, it again. It's so, yeah. so good. And so, Kasha, what about the soul agreement information from the alchemy mm -hmm. of numbers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another deep, wide ocean of an answer. So <laughs> I'm sure our audience and, and both you ladies have heard the term soul contract. Yes, yes before, of course. Yes. Right? So this is an idea that we come here to earth, we're incarnated into a certain body, a certain family, and we have these contracts. And that was my presupposition, you know, but then I started working with the Akashic Records, and this is pre-soul agreement, um, alchemy of numbers. And I started receiving a different way of looking at contracts between people and the contracts that we might have with ourselves. And they said, so the Akashic Record Keeper said, they're not contracts, they're agreements. Because a contract implies that you must do something or you're in big trouble. Yes, but do not breach true. a contract because someone will sue you or you'll go to jail or you'll get a fine, right? It implies this obligation, this pressure. And like I was saying before, the soul grows either way, expands either way, it learns either way, whether we do work on ourselves or not. So soul agreement is a more apt description of what we would term a soul contract. So this system of um, uh, alchemy of numbers that I use again, is one way of organizing soul agreement information. So you can look at astrology, you can look at human design and all those other beautiful systems. I love the system I work with because for me, it's very simple. It, it breaks down, you know, there's 52 different um, energy frequencies that we can be born into and each one has a life path. And I can tell you about what that means in a reading or, you know, if I run your numbers and I can tell you things about yourself from that soul agreement perspective, like you know, what is the message of your life? What is the contribution of your life? What is the main sort of task that you are here to figure out, to master as you, someone who's born on your birthday? And, you know, we can, we can dive into what agreements do you have with your family members, with your friends, with people that you come into contact with. And when you study this system, I'm sure any system, actually, you, t you start to see patterns. Right. A lot of my clients that, that come to work with me hold certain soul agreements. And so then when I dig into that, I'm like, oh, wow, it's the fourth person, you know, with that frequency that's coming to me. That's really interesting to me because obviously what I do helps them. And then there's something that they bring for me as well. There's something that I am meant to learn 
from working with that particular person. So that's that's how that works. Uh, that is fascinating. Mm. It, it's all so interesting. And, you know, we, we're running out of time. We're going to have to wrap up. And I don't want oh, to. so many questions. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to have you back again yeah. but or make an appointment sure. to come yeah. and see you. So um, before we have a final lovely word from you, some advice to people um, in that uh, fourth, fifth, sixth window. <laughs> um what services are you offering now in in person and um because we're in australia on, online so yeah from anyone mm -hmm. yeah, Joe, yeah right? but we've got mm -hmm. um listeners from all over the world so what what services can they access through you and you've talked about some of them here mm -hmm. yeah so i do work in person if you're lucky enough to live in the okanagan but because all of this is energy work um you don't have to be in person i work virtually or holographically so both the energy kinesiology, I, I call them energy magic sessions because, you know, that's kind of what it is. You're in front of me, whether in person or the hologram of you. And, and I use the SIP system and everything else that I know to help you pinpoint what's standing in your way. And we remove that stress so that you can have that clarity of thought, the confidence, the self-trust, you know, because that's really at the bottom of, of um, you being able to then do everything else. So I do work one-on-one -on -one in private sessions. I also do Akashic Records readings. So if you have questions that you would like to access your soul wisdom and, and receive some of the, that information, that's another offering I have. I also teach. That is my, my number one passion. As a ruling number seven, I carry the archetype of the teacher. And so I have a couple different courses that I've developed teaching people how to either read their own records or read uh, records for other people. And so I have my own proprietary method that I've actually been given from my records that I then teach. So, you know, if either of you wanted to learn how to do that, you could, um, you know, ha take my course, either my introduction or the certification. And I would um, share that with you. So then you could go in and read the records for other people. Oh, yeah. So that's either one-on-one -on -one or the classes like. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have links to all that. Um, on the upload sure. so people will be able to access uh, everything that Kasha has to offer. And um, Kasha, before we say goodbye, what's one last wonderful piece of wisdom? Yeah. I would like every man and woman and child to know that you never have to earn your worthiness, that it is something that is inherent to you. You are born with it and no matter what it takes, I just I want everyone to know that and, and remember that.